So today will be the uh, last class for our course already. Okay, so let's start with our class. So we have the uh, is interrupt and timers. So last week we have looked at uh, interrupt, how the embed microcontroller uh, implement the interrupt and also uh, how the interrupt is uh, executed in uh, uh, microprocessor or microcontroller in general. Okay, how the microcontroller uh, process the interrupt. So we have learned that uh, last week already. Uh, if you not uh, be able to attend the class last week, so you can uh, always go to the uh, YouTube. Okay, to uh, uh, to get the video. Eh? Actually, you can download the video from from the YouTube using the third party software. All right. So today we will go to the last part, which is the timer. Okay, you should, uh, you should see the screen here, timer. So uh, before this, uh, we actually uh, do or implement timing a lot in our program, in our application, huh? especially in our uh, 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 your mini assignment. All right. So, for example, you uh, read the analog input. So, while you read the analog input, after you read, eh, you need to have wait for the analog uh, value to be converted to the digital value, right? So, uh, most of the time, you need to use the wait uh, function, all right? Whether wait uh, one millisecond, wait one hundred millisecond, so that wait um, function actually uh, implement the timer, timer, all right? Implement the timer, and that we call the software timer, all right? Because the timer that we implement is generated by code, all right? We write the code to do that actually. So if you look at the function of uh, wait one second, wait 10 millisecond, all right? So that function actually uh, created by using uh, or by counting, okay? Count, for example, we want a delay for, uh, for one second, all right? Delay for one second. And for, let's say our microcontroller, all right? Uh, the speed yeah, or execute the instruction. One instruction, the microcontroller execute uh, or take one microsecond to execute one instruction, right? So to have one second delay means that we need to run how many instruction? We need to run one million instruction, correct? Okay, so you count from zero to one million, so that will give you one second uh, delay. All right, so that is how the software is implement uh, implementing the uh, so uh, the timing. Okay, now the problem with software timing is that when we do the counting, all right, when we run or when we uh, call the wait routine or wait function we cannot do uh, anything else except that counting all right means that we wait the cpu resources okay our microcontroller cannot do something else when do the timing so that is the problem so let's see uh, in this illustration so that you understanding uh, understand better let's say we have Something like this. We have our microcontroller. Connected to many, many sensors or many, many input. Right. And uh, 
we also connect our microcontroller to the to the output display for example and we also have the lcd for uh, indicator right indicator lcd uh, led we have the lcd and we have many many input sensor digital input right so let's for example we want to do this this led will uh, flash huh? will be flashing uh, this lc uh, this led will flash every 0 0.2 second all right and uh, at the same time we want to read the sensor even and we want to do many things else all right including uh, displaying the uh, result maybe uh, on the lcd so I want to write the program for that. Of course, we need the flowchart, right? So, this is our flowchart. You have start. And of course, you have read the sensor or do action one. Huh? Read. Read input one for example and then you do uh, action two uh, or task two and many more maybe here you can have you want to display okay and after that, you want to blink the LED. You want to flash the LED, this LED. Okay. So what you need to do is, you may say that uh, here I want to blink the LED. So I turn on the LED. On LED, on the LED. And uh, after that, because you want to flash every 0 0.2 second. So here yeah, you need to wait uh, 0 0.2 second. And then you off. So you off here. off LED and then you need to wait another 0 0.2 second before you on again wait 0 0.2 second okay so you have your arrow after you wait and then you get, need to go back right so where to go back now all right so if we want to continuously on and off led uh, every 0 0.2 second so means that you need to go here all right but your program you need to do you need to do this thing also you need to read uh, input one you need to do uh, task two you need to display so uh, it looks like you cannot uh, go here, all right? But you need to go back further to here, okay? So now the problem is that, for example, this task two will uh, take five seconds. Because task two, you have so many things to do, for example. All right. Now the problem is here maybe uh, one second. 
all right now you see the timing is not uh, the timing is not 0 0.2 second for for the led the timing is not 0 0.2 second anymore because here are uh, you on, on 0 0.2 second all right you on 0 0.2 second you off 0 0.2 second okay this is so far so good but when you go back here when you go back here here you see in order to on again you have 0 0.2 second and you plus with this 0. Point, 0 0.5 second all right another zero uh, and another one second six second already all right so it looks like very difficult for us to do this application all right although it looks like easy right read the sensor yeah we only read the uh, sensor read the input display and flashing the led eh? but when we want to write the program we face a problem the timing problem now okay because when we for example in 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 this okay when the microprocessor do task two and this task two for example got internal timing got weight routine also this weight routine is uh, three seconds for example weight three yeah weight three so this weight three yeah when the microprocessor do this so this function is actually the counting function means that if you write the program yeah uh, or if you draw the flowchart for this function it will be something like this yeah uh, start for example our microcontroller execute one instruction one microsecond so it need to count you need to have a counter with three million uh, with the value three million for the counter and you try to decrement the counter and you check whether the value is equal to zero or not if yes only then you done if not you need to go back and decrement again means that if your microprocessor uh, perform this operation right if your microprocessor performing this operation inside this task 2 we cannot do anything else okay so the microprocessor need to finish everything here okay uh, after that we will go to display and on the led and so on all right so it looks like our microprocessor cannot do two or more job at the same time okay that is the problem the timing problem okay meaning that if we use eh, or in, we implement every timing in our program using software timing or in other words we implement our timing using programming okay that is very difficult or almost impossible to to make our program uh, multitask okay you get the idea So the solution for this is that you need to have what we call the independent timer. Okay, let's let's name it in the independent timer. Okay, where this timer is run independently. 
um, from your uh, from your software. Okay, means that run independently from your program. Once you start, it will run automatically and independently from your software. Okay, so this independent timer is actually what we call the hardware hardware timer. Right? What is hardware timer? So hardware timer is actually very simple. Okay, you learned this before. Mm -hmm. This is implemented using a register. All right? So most of the microcontroller or microprocessor, uh, you will have a general purpose register, right? So in uh, our case, the ARM uh, architecture, so you have R0 until R15, all right? R0 until R12, R15 is the PC, right? R12 as your uh, general purpose register, right? Okay, so you can use this one and this one and most of the time we use this one to this one as uh, in our programming mm. so the microcontroller most of the microcontroller will have another register that is not included in the uh, programmer model uh, if you remember the programmer model all right you, we have this all, including the uh, including the PC, the stack, eh? everything, right? So, uh, actually, inside the microcontroller, you have another register called the timer, right? So this is another register. that is not belong to this group, all right? This is not shown to the programmer, okay? So this register is, uh, in our case, is 32-bit, all right? So let's say we use uh, a, a simple one, which is 8-bit, all right? So the 8-bit register, and uh, we know that the register can be used as a counter, right? Hmm. So, for example, this is the size is 8 bit. Okay, so we can use the register as a counter, right? We can uh, 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 put a number inside here. For example, uh, in this case, it's uh, in hexadecimal, so we can have 0, 0, all right? 4 bit, 4 bit, yeah, 8 bit. And then uh, we increment the counter, okay, by uh, by uh, using the uh, adder, all right. So we can have the uh, uh, we can have the adder circuit and uh, connect to this register, and uh, we can implement the counter where it can count. From 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, until, until, F, F, all right. So, this hardware timer or counter now can be used as our independent, independent counter or independent timer that we can start eh? start and let the counter run independently of our program all right so this can give you a, a very accurate eh? fixed timing all right so for example if uh, if uh, it's count eh, from 0 to 1 in uh, 1 microsecond so we can know exactly that we count from uh, 0 to 2, 
0.55 in to 55 microsecond exactly okay so if we can have the a bigger timer for example 32 bit all right 32 bit so if value inside here is 1 million okay so we can have one second uh exactly all right counting from zero to one million in one second right so had that how the microcontroller implement the hardware uh timer okay by using a counter which is included in every microcontroller nowadays okay now our problem is how to use this timer okay so in this case we need to learn how to use this timer so before that any question regarding this eh? i need you to understand the concept of timer in the uh, microcontroller in general first eh? before we go to the specific microcontroller which is the mbac okay any question uh, you can ask through the uh, the chat eh? If no, we will. Okay, Harry said no. So if no, we will uh, now go to the embed and learn how the embed is uh, implement uh, embed implement this uh, timer. Okay, so go back to slide. So this is the same thing as I um, explaining here. Okay, so this is the, the the timer, the counter, the register. Yeah. So uh, it is incremented based on the clock input. All right. And uh, one more thing is that because this is a register, means that you can uh, preload a value, uh, meaning that. It is not necessary that you need uh, to start from zero, always start from zero. So you can start from uh, any value. For example, you can load the value, right? Because the register, remember in, in data design last semester, we learned that you can load any value into the register, right? So you can preload any value into the register. For example, you want to count from, uh, uh, yeah, for example, if our timer is a bit, okay, so a bit timer or counter. So for example, we want to we want to have uh, a very exact value, all right. The time, the exact timing is one hundred microsecond, for example. Okay, so we know that uh, if uh, the value is increment every one microsecond, increment every one microsecond means that it's count. Okay, if this is the register, it will count from zero to uh, zero to two five five. Okay, in uh, Two five five microsecond, right? So, let's say we want this one hundred microsecond. How to get one hundred microsecond? Because yeah, normally uh, this timer, this counter, with this is from this is full, eh? FF already. This is two five five, and it will reset to zero again. Okay, it will reset to re zero again. And when it reset to zero, it will give you one interrupt signal to tell you that the timing is uh, the timer is full. They, we call it timer overflow. Okay, so this timer overflow is the signal to tell the microprocessor that the counting is finished, reset to zero, from the full reset to zero. So 
if we count from one five five okay so one five five we start with one five five this is n decimal yeah so when we start from one five five count to two five five so this will take 100 step exactly okay and one step yeah, one step count is one microsecond so 100 step count means that you will take 100 microseconds so means that if you start count from 155 okay and it will count until 255 and give you the timer overflow after that means that uh, when you start from 155 count to one uh, 255 there is 100 step count eh? and one step count is one microsecond 100 step count it means 100 microsecond okay so we can have something like that so we you can preload any value that you want okay to the timer and also you can read the value inside the timer as well the counter as well all right because remember the register this is just any just same as any the register that we have learned you can uh, write value into the register and also you can read value into the register okay for example we want to uh, measure the time okay so we start with from zero we want to measure the, an event for example so when we start from zero and the event is running and the event when the event is end we stop the counting all right so for example it stop at uh 200 okay the value inside is 200 okay so we want to know how long the event uh, that event is right the duration of the event so we can read from from the counter okay so that 200 means that that event that we measure is 200 microsecond if our timer count every one microsecond all right so that is how we we, we use the the counter or the timer in uh, microcontroller okay so remember the timer in microcontroller or the hardware timer in microcontroller is just a register and it is a counter okay where it's count based on the clock input all right so if clock is uh, uh one megahertz means that it's count every one microsecond and uh, you can uh, uh, preload any value uh, it's not necessarily start from zero you can start from zero or you can start from any value all right so by using the preload value and you also can read from the from the timer okay you can always read from the timer and uh, in the moment that the counter is reset to zero means that the counter is full uh, in uh, this case 8 bit from ff to zero it will give you one interrupt signal all right we call it timer overflow so that signal is very important all right the microprocessor know that the timer is done full uh, reset to zero again by this interrupt okay uh right so this is uh same thing so 8 bit so you will count from if the counter is 8 bit you will count from 0 to uh, ff if you uh, your counter is 16 bit so you will count from 0 to 65535 or ff ff okay uh all right so uh this is the if your clock eh, is one my Meg, uh, one megahertz so it will count every one microsecond right so everything is done here so let's look at the embed uh, here we want to use our timer in the embed right how to apply this uh, in the embed microcontroller 